okay so uh, this is the only topic which is uh, left in the forming syllabus so today we will cover this topic and we will also look for powder metallurgy then your uh, full matter forming will be completed so what is uh, drawing so drawing is a plastic deformation process in which a flat sheet or plate is formed into a three dimensional part with a depth more than several times the thickness of the metal so what happens in this uh, process a punch will be set into a die and that your uh, metal your blank will uh, take the dis uh, whatever the configuration which is provided on the die so th this is the drawing process so this is the diagram for the drawing process this uh, the, uh, these are things we already know this is called punch this will be your blank your sheet and this is your die and there will be uh, uh, one blank holder will be there to provide some holding force because uh, there uh, there the, there is a need to hold the blank so there will be a blank holder through which we will uh, provide some uh, holding force to the blank so this is your assembly for drawing then uh, there are again cold drawing and hot drawing so hot drawing is used for the thick walled parts of simple geometries where what we are doing uh, thinning process will take place and in cold uh, drawing there will be thin metal and uh, uh, there will be very less or not at uh, no uh, change in the thickness and uh, in cold drawing we can uh, produce a wide variety of shapes then uh, the blank size so this is one relation uh, in between your blank and your uh, drawn cup so this relation actually comes from the uh, what the condition see uh, the surface area of this sheet or uh, this blank will all uh, will be equal to the surface area of the cup which is been drawn by the process so suppose this was your round blank this formula is for round blank but the general formula will be surface area of blank will or should equal to surface area of cup so suppose the diameter of your blank is capital d then the surface area what will be the surface area surface area will be pi by 4 capital d square then <clears throat> surface area of the cup so the uh, uh, area of uh, of the uh, this much will be pi by 4 small d square and then the area of the walls will be pi d h when you will solve this you will get this one only then it will be d square is equals to small d square 4 pi 4 dh then d will be under root d square plus 4 dh so mostly in the question what they will uh, ask you they will give you the cup diameter and the height and they will ask you what should be the blank size so if uh, it is a round blank if it is a round blank then directly you remember this formula you apply the formula and you get the answer most in most of the question you will get round blank only if the blank is not round suppose this is of this kind of sheet or something and from that you are making a rectangular cup then you have to use this condition that the surface area of your blank will be equal to the surface area of your cup okay uh, try to solve this question now blank is initial sheet we had yeah blank is initial uh, work piece whatever you have yes. try to solve this question C ma'am. Yeah, option C is correct. 
so let's read this question for obtaining a cup of diameter 25 mm and height 15 mm so there will be a blank and then with that with the help of that blank you are making a cup so diameter of this cup is small d which is given as 25 mm and the height is given as 15 mm the size of the round blank should be and they are asking what is the size of this blank so the formula we already know that is capital d is equals to small d square under root 4 dh so here we can write it as 25 square plus 4 into 15 into 25 when you will solve this it will be 5 into 17 into 5 it will be 46.09 mm so your option c will be correct can you doubt in this question <laughs> fine Uh, now try to solve this question. Okay, one more thing which is written in this slide that we should discuss. So this formula is applicable when d is greater than twenty r. What is r here? R is your corner radius, which is this radius. So in corner also we will provide some radius which is called as corner radius. So suppose your corner radius Uh, is following this condition that is d is greater than 20 r so directly you can use this formula otherwise you have to uh, otherwise if it is very small then we don't have to consider it but suppose if your uh, uh, radius is a little bit uh, large then we have to consider it in some it will take some material also right so we have to consider it in the surface area so if your uh, uh, condition if it is following this condition that is d is greater than 20r then you have to use this formula then you, uh, you do need not to worry about co corner radius but suppose if your corner radius is following this condition or this condition then your formula will be changed by these two formula your formula will be replaced by these two formula that also you should remember okay uh, now uh, try to solve this question madam yes uh, in questions they will provide us r yeah if they want you to use this uh, like this question only here they are providing corner radius is given when the corner radius is not given that means you don't have to think about that you don't have to use that so here it is given so first you have to check uh, what condition it is following you read the question write the data then i will go back to formula slide again okay now try to solve this question hello yes one madam here is also first formula i think yeah here you have to use first formula i'm c c is correct answer so in this just to confuse you they have given the corner radius so firstly what we have to find we have to find 20r if you will do 20r that is 20 into 0.4 so it will come 8 so you uh, you can use uh, this condition that is d is greater than 20r so if you will use that condition you have to go with this formula only that is d is equals to under root small d square plus 4 dh so when you will put the values it will be 100 root 5 
then it will come around 22 to 3.60 mm so your option c will be correct any doubt in this okay yes no ma'am no doubt yes okay now uh, try to solve this question वेरिएशन इन दीट थी डायमीटर अपूमल so again we have to use this formula only that is capital d is equals to small d square plus 4 dh will be under root 15 square plus 4 into 10 into 15 you will get around 28.72 mm any doubt in this question no okay now tell me the answer of this question A. A is the correct answer. Okay. Then uh, so this is just a formula-based question. So you should remember the formulas. Now uh, this is the formula for the drawing four. Uh, suppose uh, uh, what uh, uh, some stuff. Sometimes they can ask uh, about the uh, drawing fours where uh, C is your uh, clearance and uh, capital d and small d we have seen in the uh, figure t is the uh, thickness and sigma is the average stress then uh, one more term which is required is uh, blank holding force so blank holding force uh, uh, required uh, depends upon the wrinkling tendency so suppose uh, uh, if you are not uh, providing enough enough uh, blank holding force or you are providing uh, more than required blank holding force then there will be uh, defects that will be generated in your cup so that is why blank holding force is required and uh, there will be one uh, there will be clearance between your die and your punch so in the drawing your clearance is defined as uh, punch diameter is equals to this is how you calculate the punch diameter that is die opening diameter minus 2.5 and t is the thickness of your sheet or blank okay <clears throat> then now move on to deep drawing so it is like a drawing process only but in the deep drawing process when the cup height is more than half the diameter then it is termed as the deep drawing and uh, this uh, forming process is being used for uh, ductile material because it is easy for the ductile material now uh, one more thing that uh, we should know uh, what kind of stresses that will be uh, generated uh, in your cup during the deep drawing process so in the flange this is your flange so there will be tension also and compression also this is your flange uh, you are compressing it also and it uh, there will be tension force also right because you are stretching it in your wall there will be only uniaxial tension because you are stretching the wall so this is your deep drawing process and uh, uh, whatever the stresses which are formed in your cup during the deep drawing process then uh, one more term is there deep drawability so the ratio of the maximum blank diameter to the diameter of the cup drawn is known as the drawability then there is one more term which is uh, known as limiting drawing ratio suppose uh, 
there will be a draw ratio otherwise if you are not uh, if you are uh, going beyond your drawing ratio if you are crossing the limit it will uh, it will start blanking uh, it will uh, start piercing or blanking it will not draw the product so for that we have to keep these things in the mind first is drawability and second is limiting drawing ratio <clears throat> uh, after which the punch will pierce a hole in the blank instead of drawing so this ratio is basically depend upon the material and amount of the friction that is present during the drawing process so generally what uh, what uh, limiting drawing ratio is acceptable that is 1.6 to 2.3 next uh, 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 this is uh, uh, with the help of the limiting drawing ratio you can calculate the average reduction in deep drawing so suppose uh, your uh, uh, what is the formula for the reduction that is 1 minus limiting uh, drawing ratio multiplied by so with that suppose uh, if your uh, small d by capital d is 0.5 so in one go you can reduce up to 50% only the maximum reduction will be up to 50% possible in the first row that is how you calculate the average reduction and that is why limiting drawing ratio is important if you if you will try to uh, reduce it will if you will try to change more than 50% beyond the 50% suppose you uh, you can uh, reduce up uh, you can increase up to uh, some height suppose 10 mm and if you are if you will try which is under the limit but if you will try to uh, go beyond that which is not uh, coming under your uh, limit uh, under your drawing ratio then it will form a uh, uh, hole in that it will uh, start piercing instead of drawing so that is why this is also important now uh, these are very important things for deep drawing that is defects so defects in drawing first is wrinkle suppose your uh, blank holder uh, ho uh, there will be uh, one uh, blank holder by which you are holding your you are holding your blank or the first product work piece by which you are uh, holding your blank so suppose it is not uh, uh, it is in sufficient it is not uh, uh, the uh, appropriate so it will cause wrinkles uh, it will cause a wrinkle in your uh, flange also and it will cause cause wrinkles in your wall also then <clears throat> second is fracture suppose your blank holder pressure is too much that uh, it is it uh, your uh, material is not able to draw so it will uh, fracture at some point Uh, during the corner or maybe on the walls so when your blank holder pro, uh, pressure is uh, higher than required then it it can cause fracture and if it is insufficient then it is it will cause the wrinkles in your flange and walls then one more uh, important defect is earring 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 actually forms because of the anisotropy if the anisotropy is present in your material okay uh one uh, otherwise suppose you are not providing uh, sufficient uh, or uh, proper uh, blank holding pr uh, pressure suppose somewhere pressure is higher somewhere pressure is lower so somewhere it will draw more somewhere it will draw less that can also cross uh, cause the earring but my main reason for earring is anisotropy of the material suppose if your material is not anisotropic it has a uniform properties but still earring is happen that means uh, somewhere your blank holding pressure pressure is not uh, proper or maybe you haven't provide the proper clearance if the earring is uh, forming then uh, okay now try to solve this question B ma'am. Yes, B is correct. Uh, we hmm. have uh, seen previously that uh, ear, uh, why earring is earring is directional. It is mostly because of the material properties. But if you are not providing uniform blank pressure, if your blank holding is not uniform, if the clearance is not proper, then also earring can happen. So your option B is correct for this question. Hmm. Yes. 
Um, uh, like um, speed of the press doesn't come into the picture, does it? Because uh, like if the speed is more, probably the force will be more. How is that uh, depend upon the speed? No, it will not depend upon the speed. Okay. Okay, because uh, uh, for blank, mostly you are uh, providing more force on the blank only. You are trying to, uh, you are more, more uh, focus on your uh, blank holder. See, your force will be more than the, <clears throat> your force will always be less than the whatever the blank pressure we are providing, right? Otherwise, uh, blank is suppose you are holding and whatever uh, holding force is required is your blank pressure. And whatever the force you are providing to do, uh, do the drawing process, it, it will always be lesser than the your blank, process, uh, blank pressure, right? It should always be less than your blank pressure. Otherwise, your blank will move down. Fracture will occur. Sorry? Fracture defect may occur. It may occur. Yeah, defects may occur and it will may go down also. So that is why uh, what we do generally, the force will always lower than your uh, holding pressure. So that is why uh, our prime focus will be the holding pressure. So that is why uh, your uh, speed will not uh, affect uh, it will cause it, it can cause a defect but not the airing one. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is one more uh, defect that uh, that can form during drawing that is miss strike. Suppose there will be uh, some slight of uh, misplacement of the stock or your blank, then uh, your uh, flange will be unsymmetrical. So this defect is known as mist strike. Then the orange peel. So orange peel is what a surface roughening defect. So it is it happens because of uneven flow, or you can say suppose your material is having uh, large grains. Suppose you are uh, doing a, a deep drawing after any link process so there will be large grains so that is why some surface roughening will be present after the uh, uh, drawing process due to coarse grain size so that is called orange peel then scratches suppose your uh, die or a punch is not having smooth surfaces suppose your uh, die is having some kind of uh, 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 small small uh, uh, impressions on that so because of that if you surface or some roughness is there so because of that also uh, some scratches can form on your blank or cup uh, that is uh, this kind of defect can also be formed in drawing that is known as scratches uh, now uh, try to solve question whatever we have uh, seen till now A. Yeah. A. Correct. A is correct. Uh, let's read the question. In the deep drawing of cups, blanks show a tendency to wrinkle up around the periphery. So, when wrinkle form, when there will be a uh, insufficient blanking press. So, because of that, there will be a buckling on the circumference due to the compression. Okay. So, uh, uh, in the option, there will be one cause and there will be one remedy. So, what is the remedy? How uh, we can uh, reduce this uh, defect of wrinkle by increasing the blank pressure. So, option A is correct. Uh, that is buckling due to circumferential compression and increased uh, blank holder pressure will be the remedy for this defect. Okay. Madam, C is also Sorry? C also looks correct. Yeah, C also looks uh, correct. See, but uh, uh, you cannot uh, uh, you cannot go to a very high temperature for drawing, right? 
yes and uh, when you are uh, if you are doing uh, uh, suppose if you are doing hot rain then you don't have to put coolant in the in that right if you are going for have very high temperature then it will be hot rain in hot rain you will not provide the coolant right no i thought uh, again and again by using that punch okay, okay. it may get hot okay. it will not uh, get that hot Okay. During the uh, piercing process or blanking process, when material, when shear stresses are present, then there are very high chances to increase temperature up to limit so that your material start expanding. But uh, during uh, uh, this kind of processes where uh, shear stresses are not not present, there will not be those uh, uh, temperature increase will not be that sufficient to uh, form that kind of defect. Uh, now move on to this uh, one more process that is spinning. This is a very uh, easy process as you can see in the drawing uh, picture. Uh, spinning is a hole forming operation in which a rotating disc of sheet metal is shaped over a mandrel. So th uh, there will be a localized pressure which will be applied through a simple rounded end wooden or a metal tool. So there will be a rotating uh, sheet metal and there will be one mandrel. And mandrel will having the uh, configuration, the shape, whatever the shape we want for our end product. And that mandrel will uh, 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 pressurize, uh, start pressurizing your sheet from one point and it will produce the uh, shape, whatever shape we want. Suppose this is this is our uh, blank, or this is our sheet and uh, we want this shape. So uh, sh whatever the shape we want for our uh, cup, uh, suppose here it is like that. Here it is like that. Whatever shape we want, that kind of shape we will use as a mandrel. Then uh, this is some theory for spinning process that I think uh, is not uh, important, but you should read. Uh, I will upload uh, the notes uh, from which I have taken all these slides. So you should uh, go through from that notes also. Uh, I have uh, prepared from these notes, so I'm using these notes. One more process is there, stretch forming. So uh, stretch forming is actually to produce uh, large sheet metal parts for very low or limited quantity. In this what happens there will be a sheet metal which is gripped uh, by two or more sets of jaw and uh, uh, what we are doing we will stretch the uh, sheet from one or both the side. So in this the deformation, whatever the deformation will be induced, that, is, that will be induced by tensile stretching. And the forces on the form block are far less than the those normally encountered in the bending. So this is not bending, this is stretching. Because the force, whatever the cause, the uh, whatever will cause the uh, shape change, that will be lesser in the uh, whatever compared from the bending or forming. So when the force is also less, there will be less spring back effect in this process. And uh, uh, it, it is uh, used for uh, low melting point of metal or for plastic also. So this process is very useful uh, to make the body for aircrafts or uh, uh, automobiles. Suppose the, your uh, windshield or your uh, door panel or your... Uh, car panel this kind of like sheet metal process uh, they use stretch forming and uh, this is the diagram uh, there will be one jaw and they will uh, your sheet your blank will be gripped in between the uh, these jaws and there will be uh, one uh, 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 there will be one uh, uh, what you can say uh, blank uh, uh, through which you will apply some pressure and there will be completely tensile uh, uh, stresses generated in your blank and it will stretch in required dimension. So uh, this is the important formula. So the, uh, suppose there is a biaxial stretching. Uh, you, this is your sheet. You are stretching from this side also and this side also. So uh, this is the uh, strain in the first direction. Suppose this is your first direction. And firstly, your dimension was... Uh, L, 0, 1. Uh, this is your first direction. This is your second direction. Firstly, your dimension was L, 0, 1. Now it is 
L I1. So uh, this is the strain after uh, in the first direction. This is the strain after second direction. So how the uh, this is affecting the thickness? That is this direct formula for the final thickness. That is initial thickness divided divide by e to the power epsilon one. That is strain one and e to the power epsilon two. That is strain two. So you write this formula and then we will solve one question on this formula. Ma'am, bending stresses only tensile stresses are along with bending stresses also induced. Only this is stretching. We are not bending. We are just stretching. So only tensile stresses will be present during stretch forming. Okay. Okay. Now uh, try to solve this question. <coughs> okay, can you go back to previous slide for me? Sorry. Oh, yes, from just. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. option you tell me the answer b ma'am b b b ma'am option b is correct oh, so let's read the question A 1.5 mm thick sheet is subjected to unequal biaxial stretching, and the two strains in the direction of stretching are 0.05 and 0.09. That is, your strain one and strain two is given. The final thickness of the sheet in mm. So your final thickness is T. That is 1.5 mm divided by e to the power 0.05 to e to the power 0.09. When you will solve this, it will come as 1.304 mm. Okay. Uh, now uh, move on to this one more process, ironing. So ironing is what? Is it, it is the process of thinning the walls of a drawn cylinder by passing it between a punch and die whose separation is less than the original wall thickness. So what is happening in ironing? You will have one deep drawn cup. There will be a cup. Now you want to reduce the thickness of the walls only. You don't want to reduce the thickness of your uh, base. base. Yes. So thank you. So you don't want to reduce the thickness of your base. You want to reduce the thickness of the walls. Then the, this is the process that is called as ironing. So what you do in the ironing, uh, uh, you pass your uh, drawn cylinder between the punch and die, whose uh, clearance or separation is less than the original wall thickness. So this is the diagram for the ironing. So in, uh, mostly in the paper, uh, one uh, one kind of question they can ask from the ironing that what is it? ironing so that you should know which is important you should know what is ironing then a uh, few more process like embossing so uh, with the help of uh, this process you can uh, um, um, you can make uh, embosses on your uh, sheet metal uh, uh, by uh, this kind of mm, this ironing and uh, deep drawing is uh, uh, this ironing and deep drawing is uh, same
top which is made by deep drawing so whatever the thickness uh, of your uh, base and whatever the thickness of your wall which that will be equal so have you uh, seen that uh, cans like uh, coca cola cans or uh, yes ma'am Huh. So in that you have seen that your base is uh, having higher thickness than the thickness of your walls. So that is actually made by ironing. So firstly, what will do? They will do. They will make a small uh, deep. Uh, they will make a can by deep drawing. After that, they will uh, provide. Uh, they will make uh, do the ironing process. They will do the ironing process. With that ironing process, they will reduce the thickness of the. Uh, 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 your uh, deep drawn cup and the wall thickness will be uh, decreased and height will be increased so that is why uh, one more uh, this kind of question they they can ask suppose they can ask that uh, uh, can uh, or uh, uh, collapsible uh, cans can be made of uh, which process then you have to know that it is made by ironing so that is the main difference between the ironing and deep drawing <coughs> but can it be followed by deep drawing Suppose it is a circular blank, and with the help of that sheet, you are making a cup that is dry. If your height is uh, uh, greater than uh, two, uh, greater than two times of dry meter, then it is called deep drawing. So that is the drawing process. Ironing process is what uh, you are uh, uh, one drawn cup is there, and you are reducing the thickness of that cup. That is already a cup that is already formed in a shape. Now you are giving another shape, or you are reducing just the thickness of the wall. Okay, so the initial product is already a cup, so we are just reducing the dimension. Yes. Yes, madam. Yes. Uh, LPG cylinders are made by uh, deep drawing. We can make uh, LPG cylinders by deep drawing. No means oh, what by what which process they are made? Which? Ma'am, deep नहीं होती है. वो बीच से दोनों को join किया जाता है तो deep drawing तो नहीं है ma'am क्योंकि height इतनी ज़्यादा नहीं है diameter comparison में. See, few parts can be made by deep drawing. Suppose, uh, yeah, he is he is correct only. We cannot make it by deep drawing because we are uh, we will connect. Uh, uh, because your bottom part will have a, a different uh, <clears throat> dimension your how your cylinders looks like like that because your uh, or maybe or it's a joint hote maybe uh, i i don't know about that cylinders lpg cylinders i will check i don't know about lpg cylinders how we make lpg cylinders. i will tell you in the next class <laughs> okay okay uh, then this is uh, one more process that was uh, embossing and uh, then coining coining is actually a cold forging operation in which uh, material will flow but the flow will occur only at the top layer so coining is uh, used for making the coins whatever the impression that is made on your coin suppose this is your coin it will be first first a uh, small uh, 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 disc only, and uh, with the help of coin coining process, there will be one uh, punch. On punch, there will be impressions. Whatever the impression that you want uh, to be, uh, you want to be print on your uh, uh, coin or your disc, that will be present on the uh, punch on other other di uh, direction. And when you will uh, press it on your uh, Uh, disc, uh, your material will start flowing in the whatever the impression that are being formed on your punch. So this is basically a forging process, coining, then uh, the bending. Bending is uh, important. So uh, suppose uh, you have done uh, your uh, other shearing operation. So now we will go for the bending. So bending is uh, depends upon the material properties. at what location you have to bend and in your bending at the bend there will be a biaxial compression and biaxial trench uh, can you tell in which part there will be biaxial compression and which part biaxial tension 
upper part tension correct in this part it is there will be biaxial tension and this part there will be biaxial compression so this is uh, 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 you should uh, there there is one important formula for bending uh, in uh, which they ask question about that is bend alloy so what is your bend alloy that is uh, alpha uh, r plus kt where r is your uh, bend radius alpha is your uh, bend angle and k is a stretch factor constant which depends upon the radi uh, bend radius and the thickness of your sheet if your uh, bend radius is greater than 2t then your k will be 0.5 if your bend radius is less than 2t then your k will be 0.33 so write this formula we will solve one question on this Okay, then. Uh, uh, previous. Previous slide. Okay, this is one more formula for the strain on the outermost uh, fiber of the bend. That is one upon two R by T plus one. So you should know this formula also. Then, uh, uh, if you have written the formula, please uh, try to solve this question. Yeah, option C is correct. Uh, let's read the question. A 2 mm thick metal sheet is to be bent at an angle of one radian. With a ha, huh, that one more thing that you should remember that uh, uh, in this formula uh, you have to use alpha only in the radian. Then uh, let's go back to the question. A 2 mm thick metal sheet is to be bent at an angle of one radian with a bent radius of 100 mm. If the stretch factor is 0.5, the bend allowance is. So your alpha is one radian, r is 100 mm, k is 0.5, t is 2 mm. Then bend radius, bend allowance is alpha r plus k t will be one 100 plus 0.5 into two. You will solve this. It will come as 101 mm. So option C is correct. Ma'am, in the figure, can you tell which length is the bend allowance? Sorry. Length is the bend allowance. Mm, can you please say again? Which length is the bend allowance? Okay. This length is the bend allowance. Okay. Ma'am, uh, just one more thing. Uh, in the stretch forming, actually, we uh, we got L O one, L O one. That those four notations were there. It was. Uh, can you kindly explain those four only? Yes, these four lengths. This is uh, initial upon final only. The way we calculate the true strain, na, what is happening here? There will be a uh, uh, suppose there will be a, uh, a sheet. And you are stretching it in this one direction, and this is your second direction. So whatever the dimensions are changing, you have to just calculate the strain in this direction, one direction, and this is the strain in the second direction. So it is increasing. So what will be the formula? Final upon it. Final. It means I I is the final length. Yes, this is final upon initial. Yes. Okay. 
okay now uh, try to solve this question मटीरियल रिमूवल प्रोसेस आर देर शेयर स्ट्रेसेस आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर मटीरियल रिमूवल सो पी विल बी थ्री दैट वी कैन राइट देन स्ट्रेस फॉर्मिंग आई हैव टोल देर विल बी ओनली टेंशन so q will be 1 then next is coining coining i have to forging process forging means compression so r will be 2 then s is deep drawing so in deep drawing there will be tension and compression on on which part tension and compression both will present can you tell tension in the wall and the compression in the flange <laughs> yeah but in the base so tension and compression both will present right So your S will be four. So your option D is correct here. Okay. Try try to solve this one also. then next is blanking blanking will be shear shear then deep drawing shear then side left compress okay now hmm. uh solve this question B. Yes, B is correct. So uh, uh, we can uh, suppose uh, we, if you don't know what is molded. Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, why won't it be like uh, a man like molded luggage should be injection molding as well, na? Suppose, uh, suppose you have come confusion for molded luggage, but if we'll go for others also, it is quite clear for these three, right? <coughs> Easy to select what will be the process. So, if your three are matching, then you can select what is the answer, right? So, long structure. See, let's go with the very easy, easy for very easy. So, long structural shapes. that will be made by hot rolling that we know that is the easiest one here so firstly we'll go with the r that is 2 then the collapsible tubes that i have told you that will made by impact extrusion that we have studied right that also we can go 
that is also easy so in this question for this question with the two options also if you will get correct you can uh, write the answer molded uh, luggage is why it is not for a uh, Uh, other molding process that i will i i don't know that i will tell you later <clears throat> i'm writing it down but it, this is a easy question because if we uh, there are three easy options for uh, to solve this question if you'll get three options correct in, in, uh, even two if you'll get correct you'll get the answer so uh, these are the easy ones and if you want to get two packaging containers for the liquid that also we have studied in the blow molding process that it is made for made by blow molding process that also you can write easily then only p is left and only one option is matching ma'am collapsible you know, uh, impact extrusion hota hai indirect extrusion hota hai impact extrusion ma'am usme kya hota hai see uh, those uh, your uh, uh, tubes which are used for like toothpaste and all that as uh, that all are made by impact extrusion we have seen all these right in extrusion class dekha tha jahan bhi aa raha okay okay uh, so your uh, forming is finished there are few more uh, questions that we can practice on forming now one more topic which is added in gate is uh, powder metallurgy So in powder metallurgy, what we do, we will uh, our metal will be in the powder form. Our metal will be in the powder form. Then we will, uh, with the help of this powder only, we will make our end product. So how will we do that? So in the powder metallurgy, as the name given in this process, fine fine powder materials. Firstly, it will blend. Then it will press into the desired shape or compact. This process is called as compaction, and then it will be heated. That process is called as sintering in a cold, controlled uh, atmosphere to bond the contacting surfaces of particles and establish the desired properties. So in this powder metallurgy, your uh, workpiece will be your first product will be a powder. of the metal then what we will do you will uh, blend it into fine particles or whatever the whatever uh, desi uh, desired dimension is required then we will press it then we will uh, uh, shape in the whatever the shape we want we will press that in that shape then we will uh, provide some heat to uh, to achieve the bonding between the uh, particles and uh, uh, that is how then the, we will press and that is how we will find the end product that is your powder metallurgy so your first uh, process is manufacturing of powder so how we make firstly with the help uh, we, we what we will have after casting suppose you got a in got so with the help of that how will we will we make the powders so your first process is atomization using a gas tray okay this is what are whatever uh, in few slide next few slides we will uh, read that is the Uh, different processes to manufacture the powders so first first one is atomization using a gas tray so what is atomization can anyone tell in small droplets yeah in uh, suppose there is there is a stream of uh, liquid uh, then you will uh, uh, divide that stream into very small small droplets so atomization is a process in which your molten metals are broken into small drops of liquid by high speed of fluids okay this is the first uh, you should uh, in the powder metallurgy at least you should remember the name of the processes so first is atomization in which uh, this is a process of molten metals are broken into the small drops of liquid and then those uh, small uh, droplets will be heated and that's how you will get the metal powder uh, okay uh, uh, tell me the answer of this question yeah okay. Okay. then uh, next second is reduction reduction is also a process to produce the powder so what is reduction here metal oxides are turned to pure metal powder when exposed to below melting point gases results in a product of cake of sponge metal so reduction process we have seen in the chemistry it is somewhat like that it is based on the principle what we do when you the pure metal 
will be exposed in uh, in some uh, a temperature with, with which will be below the melting point of the gas that will result a cake of or a spongy metal uh, uh, with that sponge uh, the particles will be very soft and you can easily compress that sponge like particles so uh, in this uh, with the, the help of this process we make a, a spongy metal or cake uh, cake of spongy metal that is also a process for uh, producing a first product for your powder metallurgy so uh, this process is basically used for iron copper tungsten molybdenum nickel and cobalt then uh, uh, tell me the answer of this question <laughs> so this is also sorry now next process is grinding in what happens in grinding then uh, in this metallic powder is nothing but the unburnt tiny chips formed during the process of the grinding suppose you are uh, you got your uh, work piece you want to make the powder so you will do the gr grinding whatever the that unburnt and uh, chips are formed that we will use as the first product for our powder metallurgy this is the third third technique yes this is the third technique then the fourth technique is, yes without burning how can they be separated generally matlab fire to unme hota hi hai na grinding mein no it's not necessary mam jo spark type jo nikalta hai wo jalte hi to hai some chips will burn not all the chips will burn right most of the chips will not burn you will provide some coolant or something Okay, okay. Okay. Next process is electrolytic deposition. This is used for iron and copper. This is same like electroplating. What we do in electroplating, there will be uh, one uh, anode which uh, which will be deposited on the cathode material. Same process in this also. So what we do? Suppose we are making a copper powder. So there will be copper plates which are placed in a tank of electrolyte as a anode. and there will be another material uh, that will be used as a cathode material that is aluminum so what we will do when we will uh, uh, pass the dc current in our uh, uh, anode material the copper will be deposited on the cathode material so suppose this is your anode this is your anode this is your cathode and this is your copper and you want copper powder and this is some uh, any metal suppose aluminum so when you will uh, then when uh, the dc current will pass uh, there will be one electrolyte also then when the dc current will be pass your anode material will start depositing on your cathode material then uh, this plate you will take out and you will scrap off the uh, copper from this plate and that is how you will uh, get the copper powder so this is one more technique for manufacturing of powder so the cost of this process is very high but uh, uh, you can get the desired grain size then uh, some other techniques are also the, uh, there that you should know granulations machining milling shooting and condensation now solve this question b compact yeah b is correct which one of the following methods is not used for producing metal powders so we have seen automation we can uh, produce metal powders machining grinding also electrolysis also we can produce metal powders compaction is a different process it is not being used to produce the metal powders now this is the overall chart for powder metallurgy there will be one base powders and we will uh, use some binding material or lubricants then we will mix it first process is mix mixing then we will press it whatever the desired shape we want we will press it in that desired shape then we will do sintering sintering is what uh, in a in the vacuum we will uh, provide high temperature so that the bonding can happen then again we will press it then whatever the secondary option that is uh, required like machining uh, joining impregnation that we will do and then we will get the final part so this is the overall this is the overall chart for powder metallurgy now let's uh, yes 
No ma'am, blending operation. Uh, let's go first with the blending or mixing operation. So this is uh, the theory that you should know. Mostly you should know the sequence for the powder metallurgy. And in sum, uh, that I have written uh, what kind of uh, lubricants, what kind of lubricant materials and binder materials that are being used, that also you should know. Then uh, after blending or mixing, we go to compacting. What is green compact? Can anyone tell? Component without centering. Yes. Green means whenever this green word comes into your forming, that means some moisture will present in there. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, during compacting, your uh, material will be very porous only. Porosity will be present and uh, uh, it can be done as cold or warm. Then after compacting, we will do centering. Centering will be happen uh, in no oxygen atmosphere. We will heat our material up to 0.75 uh, times of the melting temperature. Then <coughs> in this, your density will increase, your porosity will be reduced. Because of that, your strength will increase. Brittleness will reduce because there will be bonding between the material and porosity will also be decreased. Because of that, toughness will also increase. So this is your sintering process in which density will increase, brittleness will reduce, strength will increase, porosity will decrease and toughness will increase. All is related. So if you remember one, like density increase and porosity decrease, strength increase, you can learn others. Then uh, uh, try to solve this question. C, ma'am. C, correct, right? There is no second thought for this question. Uh, now try to solve this question. B ma'am. Yeah, B is correct. This is all also we have uh, this not B. One more process is there for uh, uh, pressing that is cold isostatic pressing. So this is one process, one theory that you should remember and uh, uh, then uh, let uh, move on to the features of the powder metallurgy product. So in the during after the sintering then this process you can control the density or the porosity of your uh, material and uh, uh, due to that uh, your strength and hardness ductility all these things are controllable controllable process and uh, your pressing so it will make it a better surface finish your surface finish will be good and uh, you will get the uh, good accuracy dimension then uh, uh, these are some advantages like uh, good tolerances surface finish you can make complex shapes very quickly and porosity can be controlled. There would be low waste and uh, automation of this process is very easy. Uh, there are so many advantages that you can read. Uh, try to solve this question. Powder match. Right. Then uh, try to solve this question. B. B. B is correct. Uh, C. Uh, whatever the dyes that we are used reuse in powder metallurgy that are very costly. So and it breaks easily when you are pressing. Like in our labs also when uh, when we do uh, uh, compacting when we are pressing uh, those dyes can easily break and those dyes are uh, very costly. 
so that is why overall the equipment cost for the powdered metallurgy is high so uh, for this question uh, one and two is correct so that is why there are some uh, disadvantages disadvantages uh, that is your metal powders can deteriorate like it can easily oxide oxide will form and impurities can be uh, easily accommodated in your powders then uh, fixing and setup costs are very high then the part size is limited by the press and compression of the powder is used then uh, suppose you are trying to make a sharp corners and if what if you want to uh, make a wearing thickness then this kind of uh, uh, requirement is hard to produce with this uh, powder metallurgy and uh, suppose a non moldable features which you cannot make by uh, pressing suppose you want uh, suppose you want a uh, 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 some uh, 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 what we can say you want to make a uh, cylindrical hole inside your uh, product so those kind of uh, things are not uh, possible for powder metallurgy so uh, this is for today's class and uh, i have this notes uh, through which i have prepared uh, uh, for a uh, metal uh, metal cutting metal forming so i am uploading this uh, notes in the drive uh, what i suggest that you go through with the these uh, full notes <coughs> and uh, try to solve the question whatever the questions are present so if you are able to uh, cover this full notes then your uh, uh, production most of the production part will be covered by this notes only so in this metal cutting metal forming and metrology are present so i'm uploading this notes you go through with the, these notes i will also upload the short notes what i have you can uh, refer to that also in the next session we will uh, start the welding and joining hello